हे हेलो वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल इट्स रंजन एंड दिस इज डीप लर्निंग प्लेलिस्ट एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो आई विल टॉक अबाउट हाउ न्यूरल नेटवर्क वर्क्स एंड व्हाट एग्जैक्टली व्हाट आर द टर्मिनोलॉजीज इन द न्यूरल नेटवर्क दैट यू विल कम अक्रॉस इन माय लास्ट वीडियो आई हैव कवर्ड लाइक हाउ सिंगल न्यूरॉन और सिंगल परसेप्ट्रॉन वर्क्स आई हैव टेकन ए एग्जांपल ऑफ मैथ्स पजल सो इफ यू रिमेंबर दैट दीस वर माय थ्री इनपुट्स 10 30 20 एंड सपोज हियर आई एम टेकिंग टू एंड हियर आई एम टेकिंग वन आई एम हियर इट taking one so i have told you these were the weights which gets multiplied by the inputs and bias which is getting added to the input so it would be suppose we are taking z here before going into the activation function it is z so what would be the value of z it would be summation and value would be i equal to 1 and it will go to the n and it will xi is my input and wi is my weight and it will get plus b which which is bias and here i have to take bias as 20 it would be 20 plus 30 plus 20 so it would be 70 and i have to take bias as 30 so what is my formula of z so this would be my z and this is my output so what would be my output y equal to activation function of z what is activation function i have given you a brief but to elaborate activation function i will upload next video as of now you have to remember this a single neuron output of single neuron would be like this y equal to activation function of z and z is my this and when it would get plus it would be like uh, x1 w1 plus x2 plus w2 plus x3 plus w3 plus 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 xn wn plus w0 which is my bias so it would be equal to z equal to this would be a complete z and once it is go to the activation function it would be activation function of z so this would be my output so now what is neural network whenever we will come across deep learning we have to understand that we are talking about the neural network and neural network is just a collections of neurons in which each these are the neurons this is the example of neural network and if you will see these are the neurons so neural network is just a collection of neurons which are connected together in some fixed layer structure so it is a layered structure and in which each neuron can adapt itself to produce a some output by taking the input from its previous layer so that we don't need to redesign the network each and every time it will automatically adjust it will automatically adapt itself to produce a exact output that we are looking forward for and in deep learning deep means ref deep means the depth of the network how deep our network is so these are the layers this is first layer this is second layer this is third layer this is fourth layer and number of layers could be any number it depends which problem we are working on so there are some terms which we will come across in neural network first of all we have layers that i have already explained you these are the layers layer 1 2 3 4 and first layer is always a input layer and these are the neurons these round circle are the neurons it is just a representation so here we will pass our first input second input third input fourth input fifth or sixth so it means we have five independent variables these are our independent variables and this is our output layer suppose we have a classification problem so if whether a mail is spam or not if mail is spam it would be give a output 1 otherwise it will give a 0 so this is output layer these two are the hidden layers there are three types of layer first is input and second is out output input will always be a single layer output will always be a single layer but number of hidden layers could be any number it depends upon how complex our problem is but the number of neurons each layer could be any number i'm repeating the number of hidden layers could be any number it go up to n and the number of neurons in each layer in this layer in this layer number of neurons in this layer could be any number but input layer would be always a single layer and output layer would always be a single layer and second term is epochs you will come across epochs in whole deep learning so epochs is just a term for iteration or you can refer as a one loop and one epoch equal to one forward propagation plus one backward propagation i have explained you in my last video what is forward propagation forward path or what is backward propagation which is feedback propagation so i will explain you suppose i am passing my data and data is flowing through this 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 and this so this was my 
one forward propagation and here it calculates some error and after calculating error it found that output is not accurate so it will go back and it will adjust each weight so that is back propagation so now have completed one forward and one backward propagation so that means it completed one epoch so epoch is just just a iteration we have to define the value of the epochs while designing the neural network how many epochs we have to iterate and second is activation functions activation function basically achieves a non linearization and normalize the data set so this activation function performs scaling it is like scaling but is not exactly a scaling i will explain activation functions in my next videos and this is regularization regularization is just a technique to reduce the overfitting so that our model can perform good on test data unseen data so we have many techniques in regularization like l2 regularization and l1 regularization and we can use dropping out some neurons like if we want uh, to deactivate this neuron so this comes in the regularization so it is just i'm just giving a brief overview a small overview of all these terms i will be explaining in my further videos and learning rate it it is just a rate by which the weights and the bias value would change because when we will do forward propagation and in back propagation what we have to do we have to modify the weights and the bias that changing in the value that change that change in the values of weight and bias done with the help of learning rate so generally we prefer a small learning so now i will explain you the notation how we have to define the neural network so basically it would help uh, while taking a interview or giving a interview first of all we have suppose i am giving you a notation how how we have to define so first of all we have to define the layers so this is our input layer so this would be zeroth layer and this would be my first layer which is hidden layer hidden layer first hidden layer first hidden layer and this would be my second hidden layer and this would be my output layer and we generally define this layer as l and we have to remember one thing it is my notation like when you will search in the google or you will read somewhere else you will find something else but i am just giving you a idea to remember all these things whenever you have to define manually these things manually network on the paper so how would you do that whenever we have to define input that would be z and whenever we have to define output it would be equal to a it is just a denoting thing and weight as w and bias is as b suppose we have to define w so how will i define w suppose we have a weight so when i am mentioning something below it is it would be subscript and it would be superscript so it is just a power superscript would be always would be layer the number of layer what is the number of the layer if i am defining the w and at the below it would be number of neuron so this would be my n0 layer i have told you that at the super script it would be 0 and here it would be n1 and here it would be n2 and this would be my layer is equal to nl and these are the my number of the neurons so this is the neuron there are four neurons in my input layer so first neuron is 0 1 2 3 and in the first hidden layer we have three neurons 0 1 2 and here my second hidden layer we have two neurons and if you will see these all are connected to each and every one but if you will see a neurons in e each layer would not connect to each other these neurons are not connected to each other and now i have to define what is the weight so basically weight is a value which we will give to the path between the neurons of the different layers so i have to define w so what would be the value how we will define because this is also a w this is also a w how we will define so it would be like w0 it is going from 0 to 0 and it is also w0 to 0 because i have told you that in the subscript i have to mention number of the neurons so basically it is going from 0 to 0 this is also w0 to 0 and this is also w0 to 0 so we have to differentiate by defining the layer so it would be going to first so it would be first we don't have to consider this layer we have to consider next layer to which it is going so it would be w2 and this would be w003 or we can define as l and now same it would be w01 here would be one so there are many i just will define some of them and it would be w321 so at every superscript in these weights would be one it would be w012 it would be w112 and it would be w212 same here it would be w10 and would be 3 now what is bias so bias is generally given at the layer level weight 
when I'm defining the weight, I will not define the same weights to each path. Weights have to different because if I am defining the same path, if I'm defining the same weights to each path, there would be no sense defining the weights because all the weights would get multiplied to the inputs. These are my inputs x0, x1, x2, x3 and this is my input layer as I already explained. So there is no sense if I am giving the same weights to each path. But in the case of bias, it is generally applied at the layer level. Bias, bias. So now it's about Z and A. So at this point, it would be Z, layer would be 1 and neuron would be 0. And at this point, it would be 1 and neuron would be first. And this point it would be 1. So these are all my inputs which are going in this. And output would be my A1, A0, A1, A1, A. I hope you are getting now. And same here. It would be Z2 and 0, Z2 and 1. And here it would be A, sorry, A2. Here would be A2 and it would be 0. And here it would be A2 and A1. And at this point, it would be Z3 and defining as 0 neuron. So at this point, it would be AL or would be Y because this is last layer, it is NL. And now I have explained you, I have shown you in my single neuron structure, what would be the Z. So Z would be equal to the X0 plus all three weights. I have defined weights, all three weights. It would get multiply this X0. So X0 would be multiplied by all the weights. And after that, it would be multiplied by all weights. I am just defining the blue node. And next, it would be x1. And x1 would divide multi. x1 also get multiplied by all three weights. W1 all. And it would be x2. And it would be all W3 weights. W2 weights. All weights. This, this, this. All three weights would get multiplied by x2. And same here. All x x3 input would get multiplied by all weights. And when it get multiplied, it would be equal to Z. And after that, if there is a bias, it's a, it is not necessary to define bias. We can do without bias as well. But weight is necessary. And if it is bias, we can define W0. So it would be value of Z. And this would be activation function. So basically at each neuron, we have activation function. And when it would be output, so output would be A0 equal to activation function of Z. So this would be my output at this point. So at each point, it would be like this one. And once it is completed the fast forward path, then after it will go to the back propagation to modifying this weights because all the whole concept is about the modifying the weights because in we cannot change inputs. All we can change its weights. We have to define, we have to modifying the weight, we have to modify the weights so that our output can be accurate so this is all about the neural network now i believe so this is just the example as i was showing you that i was showing you that there could be a number of neurons in each layer so this is input layer so it could go in any number same as with hidden layers the number of hidden layers could go any number as it is showing n so it can be go any number and it is connected like it is each and every neuron is connected to each other but in the layer neurons are not connected to each other if you see there is no connection, no connection, no connection, but it is connecting to layer, it, the neurons are connecting to different layers, but it is not connecting to each neurons in itself layer. Now I will show you like how neural network works. I will just give you a basic understanding so that you will get an idea and you can, you can do it yourself. You just need to open Google and, and you have to type just tensor playground and hit enter and when open a first link and it will go so it will just give you overview how neural network works it is just a simulator so it has some data sets it has four data sets in classification and in regression it has two data sets so i am taking example of classification so suppose i am suppose i am selecting this so there are two types of orange and blue so what we have to do we have to classify and uh, these are the layers so suppose at the start these are the input these we have the inputs these are the input layer this is the input layer and now i have to define hidden layer suppose i have defined first hidden layer so in the in the first hidden layer i can define the number of neurons i want so suppose there is a one neuron i am selecting two neurons three neurons four neurons i am giving more than one hidden layer so in this i am selecting three neurons so i have selected two hidden layers so first in first hidden layer i have four neurons in second hidden layer i have three neurons so I can define the learning rate and learning rate we all, we have to select, we generally prefer the lowest one and we have 
four activation function but we have many activation function in real production life so i am selecting suppose sigmoid and i can use the regularization l1 and l2 and this is regularization rate i am not selecting anything here i can define the ratio of test to train data so i am selecting as 50 it is default now what i have to do so i have to just click on the run so i am running that this model and this is the epoch i am running this model and this is the epoch so it will count now it is counting the epoch so you are seeing and it is the graph so at the start here we have this much loss and it is going down if you see this is going down it is live it is awesome it is awesome explanation it is awesome simulator by the tensorflow so tensorflow is a python framework for the deep learning now you will see like loss is coming down it is coming down 0 0.46 it will go up to 0 and you will see the effects here as well so what it has done it is just classifying so it has created a partition at this line and this line now it is giving it more accuracy so that blue one will be in one part and orange would be in other part and you will see the live you will see the flow of the data in between neurons so it is giving a awesome simulation we can change the things now you will see the loss is reduced almost to zero 0 0.06 and it took 1400 epochs so it has almost classified the things so we have one or two minutes almost classified and the loss is almost zero 0 0.1 0 0.2 and the epochs are still going on so we can tweak we can you guys can select other activation function and just have a look so that you will get an understanding how neural network works and it has four data set we can use all four data sets and we can use regression as well in this video you could have one doubt as well that how many layers i will set what is the value of the weight that I will choose first and what would be the value of the bias that I will consider or uh, what activation function I will choose. So I will tell you one thing deep learning or machine learning is all about experiments. We have to do experiment. We have to do some values. So in weight initialization, we have many techniques. We have many algorithm that will do automatically initialize the weight. And if we will talk about layers, that is all about experiment. You have to consider three layer, four layer, five layer, six layer. This depends upon the problem. In case of learning rate it is all about experiment we have to try different different learning rates and in activation functions we have some limitations like in the output layer we can use sigmoid in the hidden layer we can use relu functions relu activation there are many many activation functions so we have to see like which activation function works best when so i will explain you in my next video don't worry and about bias it is not necessary to take the bias always we can run the model with weights only as well so it depends whether we want to take bias or not generally we take bias it's not a, that thing so that's all in this particular video in the next video i will show you the guide map what all the things that we have to learn to to learn the deep learning so i will show you how we will go that's all in this particular video i hope this video is informative to you and if you really learn something new today just like this video and subscribe my channel do share this video with your friends and colleagues so see you all in the next video till then goodbye enjoy happy learning